This year, we'll see the arrival of many new models of electric vehicles, and keeping them charged doesn't have to be a challenge. Welcome back to Textonation. Joining us from Emporia Energy is founder and CEO Sean McLaughlin. Hi, Sean. Hi, Fred. Thank you so much for having us back on the show. It's a pleasure. So you're continuing to innovate with your home energy platform, which is pretty wide ranging besides having EV charging systems out there. Give us a bit of an overview. Yeah, yeah. We've been hard at work for the last five years building our home energy management system and electric vehicle charging is just one component of that. Uh, our system starts by installing an energy monitor inside of your electrical panel where we can gather real-time data on your energy consumption, not only on the whole home or building, but all the way down to the individual circuit level. So we can see exactly how much energy you're spending on your HVAC system or maybe a, a pool or a sauna. And uh, and we give that data to you when I say real time at a second level. So we collect that data, send it up to the cloud, put it back to you through either web app or mobile app. And it gives you some real insight to when and how you're consuming energy. Again, we have the electric vehicle charger. We have smart plugs with energy monitoring. So now you can see your energy uses all the way down to individual appliances. And we can control those appliances through those smart plugs. And then we have our home battery system. And so think of a Tesla Powerwall competitor where you can put this into your home to maximize the value of on-site generation like solar or to do emergency backup if the grid goes down. Um, and we're not stopping there, right? We're really hard at work right now on our vehicle to grid or bi-directional EV charger that we plan on having fully certified by the certification houses by the end of this year and we'll start manufacturing and ramp up early next year. But this is the idea that you'll be able to run your home or building off your electric vehicle while it's parked in your parking lot or, or garage. And with that, we really think we'll be able to drive quite a bit of efficiency and savings off of your utility um, bills. So we're super excited, I'm kind of bringing the whole holistic ecosystem together that allows customers to manage their entire home or building through the Emporia Home Energy Management System. Now, the, the Ford F-150 Lightning has done pretty well with, the, with orders and pre-orders through people being really interested in this bi-directional charging. In other words, being able to run your house off of the vehicle it should, should uh, there be a power failure. And that's been successful. You know, you're, you're looking to see more and more vehicles have that capability and you're going to make uh, equipment that will enable that? Most of the major auto manufacturers have announced that they're going to support bi-directional EV charging in some shape or form. They've been a little bit light on the details, but when you think about Chevy or Ford or even the newer brands like Lucid and Rivian, they've all said they're going to support bi-directional. And now the industry is trying to work out what that means and, and how does that work? And so working together with open communication protocols like ISO 1511-8-20, which is power line communications between the charger and the car. So they can discuss when and how they discharge versus charge. And so that's kind of the framework we're building around. So absolutely building for a future that's yet to come, but most of the manufacturers have announced that they are going to support it. And when you look at the transition to distributed renewable generation, it is imperative that we tap those electric vehicle batteries to really stabilize the grid and to balance the grid from that you know unpredictable disruption that takes place with renewable generation. And uh, we should say that uh, we don't know what Tesla is going to do because they haven't said, right? Yeah, you know, T Tesla is, well, is an amazing company, um, but they keep it pretty close to their best and they like to have more of a closed ecosystem. So you kind of think of Tesla and Apple in the same vein, where they try to kind of vertically integrate, control their complete ecosystem and don't have a lot of open protocols. So my and guess they, is- And they do make a battery for the home. It. They do make a battery for the home too. And solar panels, right? right. So batteries, and they're doing the virtual power plants. So this last summer in California, they participated in a virtual power plant program where they were exporting power back into the grid from their home battery systems. And they've announced they're doing one in Texas, ERCOT, next year. So they're definitely one of the leaders, but they keep it close to their vest and they kind of control everything. So we'll see what they do when they're ready to announce it. <laughs> now, 
Let's talk about the the uh, consumers who are thinking about and maybe purchasing EVs this year because that's that's a lot of people probably, yeah. and what they should know about charging in the home, which, from my experience, really makes having an EV worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, I agree. They say that eighty to eighty-five percent of all EV charging takes place at the home or the workplace. So there's a lot of investment going on in these DC fast charging networks slash gas stations. But for EV owners like yourself, and my household has has two of them. One of the hidden gems is that you never have to go to one of those stations, right? You pull in two or three times a, a week, you plug in a home EV charger. And when you wake up in the morning, your car is fully charged. It's such a great convenience. So tell us uh, what people should know about how expensive that is to to put in your home. I mean, you you make the hardware, not the, you don't do the in, the installations, but you tell us uh, what people should know. Correct. Well, let, let's starting with the hardware. You know, an AC to AC electric vehicle charger. In other words, we're taking AC current from your home or building and just passing that through the EV charger into the car as AC current is actually fairly basic hardware. You can almost think about a this is a large smart plug, right? And when you look at the different manufacturers, ourselves being one of those, it is really hard when you kind of take the cover off and look at the, the electrical bomb in there for one to differentiate itself from the other. And so a 48 amp level two EV charger, 11 and a half kilowatts is what is about top of line specs of what a car can handle. The chargers are really would come to the hardware. They're the same, right? And that's one thing you need to be aware of. There's um, the number one selling product sells for $750, um, $700. And you were retailing ours for $399. And so you're getting the exact same three-year warranty, the exact same specs as far as its capabilities at a fraction of the cost. And um, and the reason we're able to do that is because we're thinking about kind of the long-term value and relationship with the customer versus just trying to make money selling them the electric vehicle charger. So that's number one, right? When you're looking and you're shopping, just be careful that you're not overpaying for really what is a relatively simple piece of hardware and is the same as everyone else. We like to say, why why pay more? Um, the second thing is the only way we can really differentiate ourselves from one another is the user experience, the kind of software features that come along with that. And so when you're looking to purchase, I think price per kilowatt becomes important. And then look at the smart home features that you are that you're interested in. Um, our charger comes with what we call time of use pricing. So if you're on a time of use utility rate schedule, you can set it so it only charges during the cheapest hours of your rate schedule and pauses during those expensive. We have um, peak demand management, so we can pause your EV charger when your oven or your air conditioner kicks on, so you're not setting a new peak energy usage. And we have excess generation. So we can detect when you're producing more energy, if you have on-site generation than you're using. And we can literally turn your EV charger to on to absorb that excess generation before it goes back to the grid. So you can do kind of solar-only charging, if you will. And so some of the unique features that you get are really software-driven. And that's what I think you should spend a lot of your time looking into. Now, once you have chosen a charger and you get it home, Yes, most folks are going to need to have a professional install, and that is um, running a 240-volt line from your electrical panel into your garage or your carport or your driveway, right? So you can plug in the EV charger. And you really have two options. You can hardwire your charger directly into your electrical panel, which will give you about 48 amps of charging capability, or you can use a NEMA plug. So think about a you know, your clothes dryer and how it plugs your 240 plug in there. And you can have an electrician just run one of those plugs in your garage. And then most chargers will come with a NEMA cable that you can just plug in. And that's really convenient. So if you change out chargers, you don't have to have an electrician come out to rewire it. You just plug it in and out with a NEMA. Now, the downside of that electrical code only allows you to charge at 40 amps if you're using the NEMA cable. So there's some limitations of how fast you can charge in that NEMA, but not terribly. You're using 40 versus 48 amps. So you're just losing a little bit by using the NEMA cable. Now, being said, a typical electrician, 
it's going to vary quite a bit depending on where your electrical panel is. If your electrical panel is in the garage and you're just going to run uh, a line, you know, several feet and within line of sight of your electrical panel, you know, it shouldn't charge much more than $500 to install it. Now, if your electrical panel is in your basement or on the side of your house and you got to run conduit through your house, it can get quite a bit more expensive. And we've seen installs up to $1,500. And describe for us uh, a little more fully, perhaps, because you mentioned it, uh, how this fits in with your energy management ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. Again, we're really focused on delivering what we call a holistic home energy management experience or set of products, right? And again, it starts with uh, with our home energy management uh, energy monitor that is installed inside of your electrical panel. It can gather real-time information on your whole home and building, and it can get that individual circuit level, level data. And then that seamlessly works together through our software integration with the EV charger with our smart plugs, with our home battery system, and soon with our bi-directional charger, right? And we're actually not stopping there. We're going to bring out a solar inverter as well. And then we're really excited about bringing out what we call our HEMS product, which will be a bi-directional inverter that you can plug solar, a home battery system, or your electric vehicle charger into. And it just comes to your central home energy management platform. The other thing that we've done, Fred, is we spent a lot of time writing to third-party smart home device APIs so that we can integrate their user experience into our software. So for example, you could control a um, therm smart thermostat through your Emporia system, whether that be an Ecobee, uh, Emerson Sensi, or a Honeywell, and soon will be complete with a Nest. And so you can literally pause your HVAC system when your oven kicks on, right? Or you can pre-cool your house when you have excess solar by our software automatically adjusting your thermostat a couple of degrees. And then when the solar goes away, it takes it back to temperature. So again, taking full advantage of that on-site generation. And we're going to continue to do that. Smart appliances is next. You know, why not pre-cool your refrigerator during those inexpensive off-peak energy hours so that when you're in the expensive peak hours, you're not having to cool your refrigeration as much, right? So the whole idea is to have more and more smart home integrations and more and more automation so that our software kind of manages this all for you in the background. And boy, at the end of the day, we just want to send you a report once a month showing you all the things we kind of adjust and turn on and off through the, through the month and how much money we saved on your energy bill. Um, today, without a home battery or without a uh a bi-directional charger on the average consumer we can save about 10 to 20 percent off your energy bill when you plug in a bi-directional charger there's markets with time use pricing where we think we'll be able to save closer to 50 percent off your energy bill literally leveraging that car battery that's sitting in your garage will lower your electrical spend by 50 percent wow that's terrific and with the price of of energy today uh which is pretty volatile uh, as we've all seen, uh, that's so, so important. So looking ahead to to this year, what what is it? I mean, you talked about some of the things that you're going to be coming out with uh, down, down the road a bit. Um, what excites you most about these coming months in terms of uh, technology? Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. Just more and more cars in choice, right? We're going to have a lot of new models that are going to start rolling off of the assembly line in 2023 and 2024. They're going to vary from price range, which is going to give a lot more selection and, if you will, product market fit. We'll see a lot more SUVs and larger vehicles, which is exciting. But if you look out the next two or three years, one of the things that we're most excited about is battery technology in itself right? And the emergence of solid state batteries that we believe you'll start seeing in cars as early as 2025, 2026, but definitely in the second half of this decade. And these solid state batteries are going to be a large improvement off of the liquid lithium ion cores that we see today. It'll improve range um, or decrease size of battery and weight of battery and cost of battery, you know, 30, 40, and eventually 50% by the end of this decade. And so that'll take a car that's getting just over 300 miles uh, of total range up to like 500 miles of total range. 
And that's going to be really exciting. And it's going to um, help us decrease the cost of electric vehicles to the point where they are price competitive or even an advantage over ICE vehicles. Really interesting. For more information on all that you're doing, where can people go? Yeah, absolutely. EmporiaEnergy.com is our website. And um, we also list our products on Amazon. So if you're looking for a level two EV charger, ours will come up on top of the list. Or please visit our website, www.EmporiaEnergy.com to look at the entire ecosystem. Congratulations on the innovations, Sean McLaughlin. Thank you for spending time with us. Fred, thank you so much for having us on and giving us the opportunity to talk about Emporia and all that we're doing. We appreciate it.